Welcome to the Electricity of Life, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. As EU theorists examine the ecology of space, the distribution and interactions of structures in the cosmos, we may forget to ponder what electromagnetic ecology has shaped us, the observers. Let's look at the relationship between organisms and this massive magnetic sphere they live upon. In the 1980s, Francis Ivanhoe, an anthropologist and pharmacologist, cataloged an intriguing observation while studying Paleolithic human skulls from the Northern Hemisphere. He noticed a correlation between periods of increased geomagnetic field strength and sudden gains in cranial capacity. This also coincided with two notable periods of cognitive innovation, such as the widespread domestication of fire. Dr. Ivanhoe published such findings in the Journal of Human Evolution and the Journal of Bioelectricity. In 1990, he co-authored one study with a distinguished fellow anthropologist, Dr. Eugene Hamill. By that time, they had confirmed the geomagnetic intensity brain case expansion relationship in populations throughout East Asia, Europe, North Africa, and North America. Ivanhoe posited that the strength of the geomagnetic field was cueing growth hormone production through the hippocampus. Its upper section, called Ammon's horn, is an arch with one-way nerve traffic driven by a strong current. It might be acting as a transducer, he thought, which feels the strength of the Earth's magnetic field and gives input to regulate growth hormone activity. Ivanhoe also pointed out that among primate species, we humans are distinctive in the size of our hippocampus and the development of its connections with the hypothalamus. Professor and Research Director Michael Levin cites Ivanhoe's finding and many others of consequence in his summary of bioelectromagnetics in morphogenesis. But do species on this planet show a capacity to more actively sense the magnetosphere around them? This is clearly the case. In a tank of water surrounded by magnetic coils, four scientists from the University of North Carolina recreated the magnetic traits of two different real-life locations on the Earth. Sea turtle hatchlings of the loggerhead species were put in a harness that recorded their swimming direction. The turtles swam in highly divergent directions, depending on the traits of the field, heading southwest in the East Atlantic field and northeast in the West Atlantic field. These directions are also consistent with optimal migratory trajectories for navigating the North Atlantic subtropical gyre. It is an intriguing insight for the scientific community to observe the creatures of this world responding to artificially created features of particular magnetic topography with instinctual responses. During the 80s and 90s, Robin Baker at the University of Manchester published a series of experiments and discussions on human magnetoreception. Blindfolded students were equipped with headbands either containing magnets or identical bars of non-magnetic brass. The students were driven through the town in a maze-like fashion and out along a straight highway where he stopped to have them ride on cards their guess of the direction back to the school. Next he drove them to another location where he had the students guess again. The students with fake magnets around their heads their magnetic sense presumably unimpaired, had been able to guess the direction of the school with a surprising degree of accuracy. Meanwhile, students with real magnets around their heads had a significantly impaired direction sense. Pigeons are a favorite subject of research on magnetoreception. Recent experiments studying the capacity of pigeons to navigate natural magnetic anomalies have confirmed how strongly the species feels the Earth's magnetic features. In the case of one series of experiments at magnetic anomalies, some manner of magnetoreceptive cells in their beaks appeared to be their first choice of guidance system. Pigeons which had this tissue of their beak anesthetized were oblivious to the magnetic anomaly and successfully flew off rather easily. Pigeons in the control group, whose cells had not been anesthetized, flew haphazardly about with confusion. On a rather individual basis, these pigeons came to reason out the problem and, presumably, disregarded their magnetic sense in order to leave the area. So what does this experiment tell us? Well, I'm sure many in the audience are surprised that you can anesthetize part of a bird's beak, but that's besides the point. It is, of course, fascinating to contemplate what life on this world feels like 
to some of the other species around us. For those in the field of conservation who would apply their scientific skills in stewardship of the biodiversity of this planet, the topic of magnetic ecology is something to consider. Particularly, the biological accuracy with which life forms perceive the geomagnetic markers that they base their behaviors upon. Returning to the lab of the North Carolina biologists, the team has found that the location of loggerhead turtle nests varies in accordance with geomagnetism. The researchers analyzed the data of nesting sites in 12 counties in Florida over a 19-year time span. Specifically, they found that nest placement varies in accordance with inclination changes, inclination being the angle of the Earth's magnetic field where it enters the ground. Unfortunately, a previous conservation practice was to protect turtle nests from predators using cages of galvanized steel. These cages have an unintended side effect of altering field inclination within them at about 4% at the bottom and 20% at the top. In an experiment that is likely to arouse ambivalent feelings from PETA members, the conservationists altered the magnetic field around turtle eggs using magnets. They found that turtles raised in this distorted magnetic field exhibited navigational ability that was no better than chance. Their nearby siblings, hatched at about the same time in magnetically unobstructed nests, retained their usual powers of magnetic guidance. Concerning the cellular mechanisms by which our planet's electromagnetic field is felt, organisms likely use multiple biological systems operating in tandem. The primary challenge in understanding how creatures biologically detect magnetism lies in the complexity of living systems. Our human mind, with all its particular expectations, has had some difficulty deducing where in the body we should look for this sense and what structures we should expect to find. Magnetoreceptive systems have been clearly verified on the backs of magnetically sensitive bacteria, but magnetoreception in complex organisms has been evidenced in places as diverse as the eyes and the ears, often in the same organism. The idea of magnetoreceptive cells in the beaks of pigeons was recently thought to be a false lead, but experiments on pigeons' neuroanatomy and behavior when their beak is anesthetized would seem to conclude otherwise. In our next episode, we will explore more behaviors and specific biological mechanisms through which we can observe evolved connections between life forms and the planets on which they live. Has this glimpse of the literature excited you about biophysics and the scope of science today? Learn additional information in the Thunderblog post which inspired this video, and check out the links in the description to leap into learning more about the electricity of life. For continued episodes of the Electricity of Life series, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.